Hi guys, my name's Diana and welcome back to InnoGames TV. 2014 was a blast and let's hope for an even better 2015. So let's see what we have and go right to the overview. We start the year off by looking back on 2014. Gordon from the Travel Wars 2 team shares some numbers and facts with you. Elvenar continues its sneak peeks with a special segment on upgrading buildings. Grappolis shows you its new features inspired by what you, the community, has requested. Wild Pear from the Forge of Empires team explains how to create a new building. Besides that, we take you through a behind-the-scenes look at our art exhibition. And, last but not least, we end the episode with a special message for you from our employees. I know this sounds awesome, so let's go to Gordon and get more details. Hello Knights and Fair Maidens, my name is Gordon Kemper, I am the Junior Product Manager for Tribal Wars 2 and uh, welcome to the Tribal Wars 2 2014 wrap-up video. Our journey began this year in June, that's when we had our closed beta, we've been there for around 2-3 months. After that in September we had our open beta and we started with uh, three markets, uh, the French, the German and the English one. But uh, since then all our markets have been launched, uh, 23 at the moment. And uh, we've also uh, had our uh, uh, app launch for Android, which is uh, absolutely amazing. Uh, we've had great feedback from you guys and we're continuing to improve that. And um, yeah, uh, in 2014, you guys were also very busy. You've been playing a lot and uh, we prepared some stats for you uh, to show what you guys accomplished in 2014 in Tribal Wars 2. Three billion units have been recruited. 3.5 million coins have been minted. 11.5 million messages were sent. Over 100 billion resources have been sent to players in-game. So as you can see in 2014 you guys were pretty busy, uh, which is very good. Uh, I think the numbers speak for themselves. Uh, but uh, before we go, uh, we also like to give you guys a little bit of a small uh, roadmap on what you can anticipate for 2015. So first of all, we'd like to launch our iOS app. Uh, we know that our Android app is very popular and uh, we're working on the iOS app and uh, it will definitely be there in the new year. Also what we wanted to do is we wanted to improve our, just the general quality of the game. Uh, many of you guys uh, suggested that in your forum comments and also on our social media channels, so that's something that we want to tackle. Uh, one thing we also want to do is we want to improve our tribes uh, as it is uh, tribal wars. So um, yeah, um, I can't talk about that too much, but that's, we're going to put a focus on that, so yeah, be prepared. And also, we would like to, uh, in 2015, we'd like to start doing more events uh, with, uh, and we have some really, really great rewards planned, so stay tuned for that. Uh, thanks so much for your support and your help uh, with our game. We really appreciate it. Uh, we wish you all here from uh, InnoGames and the Tribe Wars 2 team a happy new year, and uh, yeah, we'll see you in 2015. I don't know about you, but I've been following the Elvenar blog to see if I can get a glimpse on the new game. So if you're like me, get excited and let's go to the next segment. Hello everyone, this is Timon from the Elvenar team. Today, we want to give some more information about our upcoming city builder directly to you. One of the key features to succeed in Elvenar is the upgrade system of the buildings. So let's take a closer look at it today. Oliver? Sure can do, Timon. Coincidentally, I have a few pictures here that will illustrate the feature. Please take a look. Here we have the Marble Manufactory at level 1. You can already guess that this building is more than just a pile of rocks. One upgrade later, the plain structure of the original building has already evolved into this little fella here. And he just keeps on growing. A few upgrades later, his shape changes almost completely. And that is still not the end. Here is one example of a later marble manufactory. Most buildings in Elvena can be upgraded up to 14 times, greatly enhancing their respective abilities. The building Oliver showed produces marble, one of the early goods in our game. Every upgrade increases the production amount. You will need this to cover your future marble demand. To upgrade a building, you pay mostly resources like coins and supplies. Some buildings even require goods. Here is another example, the silk manufactory. Sometimes you will proceed with one building faster than with others. But in general, it is advised to keep all buildings in your city on a similar level. Let's continue with the humans. This is the first level of the barracks, a place to train your military units. After a few upgrades, the basic training site slowly transforms into a well-fortified castle. 
Notice how the building not only expands in height, but also in width. Timon, you want to say something about that? Yeah, this is actually a quite important aspect of upgrades. At some point, an upgrade will also increase the building size, eating up more space in your town and forcing you to rearrange your buildings. For these even more powerful upgrades, you will have to research an additional technology first. In other words, you cannot just upgrade every building to its max level right from the start. On the other hand, those upgrades will also bring immense benefits with them, so they are definitely worth it. One last example, the Human Supply Workshop. This building is one upgrade away from increasing its size. After the upgrade, it looks like this. It is almost a completely new building, still keeping the main elements that defined its predecessors. Well, I think that was already a lot of information. As always, you can find this and more on elvana.com. See you and goodbye! You asked for it, we heard. Let's go with Jordan to see the new features on Grepolis. Hello, my name is Jordan and I am the lead community manager of Grepolis. Some of you might already know me from past videos. For those that haven't, you will get the chance to know me as I will take over Marcel's part. But before to start, I would like to thank Marcel for his hard work. You did a great job, Marcel. Over the last few weeks, we have been working on improvements and new features which were suggested by you, our community. Most of them are only small changes, but they were all made to improve the game flow. So let me show you what we have implemented. I want to start off with the inventory improvement. Here we added a number which indicates how many items I'm storing in my normal inventory right now. As you can see, it shows a 2, and when I open it, you can see that there are 2 items in it. As you can see, we also added 10 more slots to the inventory. You will have a lot more space to store your rewards from Highland Quest and Heavens from now on. We have also improved the notes. You have been asking to be able to do more than one note, so we implemented this feature to create up to 5 tabs of notes. As you can see, you can use these new tabs to divide different notes. This will keep organized. Now let me show you some more improvements you have suggested. We improve the overview of the spells you can cast on a city. Here you can see how many favors you have left for every god. You can also see how many times you can cast a certain spell. After using a spell, you can also directly go to the spell report by clicking on the button that shows up afterwards. Quite convenient, isn't it? Now let's go to the ranking and view a player's profile. We have made slight improvements to how the player's rank is displayed. You can now see the rank and total amount of battle points. In addition, we now give you more information on your attack window of farming villages. Now you can see the travel time to attack. You will know right away how long your troops will take to attack a farming village. As we are talking about attacking already, let's see what we can do. You are probably already familiar with the diving powers of Athena and the benefits of the spell Wisdom. Let's check an incoming attack and see how we improved it. When I'm casting the spell Wisdom on this attack, you can see that we implemented a simulator button where you can directly access the simulator from reports including Wisdom. This could be quite useful to check if your troops can stand against the incoming attack of an enemy. Now let me show you one more thing that you suggested several times. We created a new award for you. It is called Last Man Standing. It shows other players that you have been brave enough to play actively on a world until it finally closed. And you know what is cool about this award? All of you guys are gonna get it if you have been actively playing on a world which is already closed. So why don't you check your profile and see how many you have? Okay, don't hesitate to share your feedback with us about these new features and I hope to see you soon. Want to know how to make a new building? Game Designer Pierre shows you how to do one on Forge of Empires. Hey guys, my name is Pierre Kröger. I'm a game designer of Forge of Empires. Today I'm going to spoil you. I'm going to show you a building of the Tomorrow Era, our next upcoming age. And I'm going to use that as an example to tell you how a building is put into the game. And if you look at it, it starts right here in our game design office. You can see me and uh, my colleague Michael discussing about our upcoming age. And as always, we like go and do a lot of research first. We uh, look at popular movies, we look at comic books, we read books, we uh, listen to music and obviously we search the internet a lot. And with all those research in the background, we come up with a new theme for an age. And after that, uh, 
we try and find buildings that kind of fit into the theme. We require from our buildings that they look very interesting, that they have uh, exciting abilities, that they um, are distinct from each other. Um, they can't all have the same sizes and obviously we need to talk very close with the graphics department in order to make those buildings work. And um, right after we are finished with that, right after we basically came up with the buildings for a new era, um, that's when we hand the um, briefings over to the graphic department. First, our talented graphic artist Alex is creating a concept art for every new building in the game. He draws it like by hand, makes sketches on paper first, and after he's happy with them, he colorizes them and uh, creates a digital version. So here we go, this is the finished concept art for our urban farm, one of the buildings from the Tomorrow era. With the concept graphic in hand, our 3D artists start their work on the buildings. Here we go, as you can see, First, they basically do a really, really rough version of the building. They use geometric shapes to make up a basic model. Yeah, you see like triangles, blocks, uh, balls, and um, adding more details as we go, but still on a very rough scale. Look closely at the top right of the building. There you can see a small dude standing. He's our stand-in guy when it comes to making, creating the right dimensions for the building. Um, we always use the same guy so that all the buildings will look like roughly the same scale in the city later and no building will really look out of proportion. And the work continues. As you can see, after the basic shapes are done, there's more details added. The colors at this point are only uh, used as a help for the graphic artist to basically get the perspectives right. Here you see funny numbers appearing. These are to help the graphic artist solve any issues which come with perspective or where the building might not be modeled correctly. And these will be replaced by textures later. As the work on the building progresses, you can see now that all the small details are being added and it really starts to look like a building in your city. It always has the same set source of lighting, like one basically the sun shining from the same angle onto your city. Um, there's only like a few extra light spots created uh, for every building, like you can see here in the, in the opening, in the doors of the building, there's like light sources inside as well. And in the end, finally, all the animations are added. The animation artist places all the moving objects onto a building and he has to do so by creating a loop of 24 frames. So all the objects you see, they basically move 24 times, single bit, and then they start from the beginning again. Once the animation artist is done, the building gets exported, the graphic work is done and the building is ready to get implemented into the game. Okay people, that was the urban farm from our upcoming content, the Tomorrow Era. More of those buildings will be hitting the game very soon, so stay tuned. 2014 was bombarded with events from our office, but did you know we also hosted an art exhibition? Our next video shows you more information on it. Our talented artists had their time to shine at our first art exhibition. 350 visitors attended the event in the InnoGames office that was transformed into an art gallery. Besides presenting artwork from our games, 20 artists exhibited more than 100 personal artworks. I was a little bit overwhelmed by how much amazing art there actually was. It looks like everybody contributed a lot of their personal art as well and it's really, really nice to see how different and diverse it is. Most of the artworks could also be acquired in the silent auction for charity. I'm actually also just now <laughs> going to bid on an artwork myself because I really like it. Uh, and um, that's also something that is really nice because you don't always have the chance to acquire art that you see and you like. With the proceeds of the auction and the shop, where we sold art books, buttons and t-shirts, we could collect 1,800 euros for the Gaming Aid initiative. A lot of artists have different styles, so there's a really huge bandwidth of uh, different types of paintings and uh, drawings, 3D models. You get a really great impression. It's really nice. In case the attendants wanted to get creative themselves, 
they could partake in the Marco Wars while lead artist Thorsten provided danceable 80s music all night long. Now you know we couldn't have done this episode without saying something special to you guys, so we put something together. Enjoy! Hi, ich bin Fabio und ich wünsche euch ein frohes Fest und einen guten Rutsch ins neue Jahr. Salut, ich bin Lucian und ich wünsche euch ein neues Jahr. Ich wünsche euch ein neues Jahr und ein neues Jahr. Wir wünschen euch ein neues Jahr. Hallo, ich bin Matt von Inno Games und ein Happy New Year to everyone. Witam serdecznie. Nazywam się Dominika. Dzisiaj chciałabym złożyć Wam życzenia zdrowych i pogodnych świąt oraz wszelkiej pomyślności w nowym roku. Hola, me llamo Diana y les deseo una feliz Navidad y un próspero año nuevo. Zdravo, ja som Leonard Bojkowski, od Frontend Development Team od Forge of Empires. W posłaku srednia nowa 2015 godina, so nowy żel bez uspech, zdrowie srednia w nowym tego roku. Привет, меня зовут Павел, поздравляю всех новым 2015 годом. Wanakam, elargum Angela Putan van Valtikar. Ciao, ja som Simon Stetman of Arbeidner. Всем привет, меня зовут Евгений. Всех с Новым годом. Мир нам умерхе. Мир дарю все, а всебко не асад мубарако. Well guys, that's it for this month's episode. If you like this episode, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We'll make sure to bring you the latest news on all our games. Until next time, bye!